Hello and welcome to the 49ers First and 10 podcast, 10 minutes of the most up-to-date 49ers news first thing in the morning. I'm your host, Brianna McDonald, and I'm joined by 49ers team reporter, Lindsay Pilares, and we're welcoming back special guest, Larry Kruger, to the podcast. Larry, thanks for joining us. How's your Monday going? Oh, it's going fantastic, and um, I'm looking forward to talking Niners and Packers with you ladies. Exactly. So faithful, all the details you've been waiting for are now set. The 49ers will face the seventh-seeded Green Bay Packers in the divisional round this Saturday, January 20th at 5.15 p.m. That game will be airing on Fox, but the faithful already know to pack out Levi Stadium. It's going to be a huge game, and tickets are already available on 49ers.com. But Larry, was this the opponent that you were expecting? Tell us what your thoughts were going into Wild Card Weekend. I really was expecting Green Bay to go to Dallas and, and win that game. I mean, Green Bay is playing really well. Uh, Dallas has struggled um, with, you know, they Dallas, I think, was a little bit of a front-running team. I mean, they played like seven or eight games against teams that were not very good, and they beat them all by 30-plus points. But the Niners handled them, as we all saw, and they struggled against some of the better teams on their schedule. And Green Bay has got a great young quarterback in Jordan Love, and their general manager has done an amazing job at surrounding him in the last two drafts with a lot of really, really young weapons. And the scary thing about the Packers is they're so young that they don't even, they're almost like impervious to pressure because they don't, they don't feel it. They're so young. They're so much ahead of schedule that they're just out there playing ball and they're not worried about any of the pressure. And it's, it's clearly evident. And with the opponent now set, it's very interesting because NFL history is very circular. There's now a renewal of a playoff rivalry. Lindsay, what were your first thoughts when you saw that Green Bay was going to be the Niners' first opponent in their postseason run? Yeah, so this was obviously the first NFC matchup of Super Wild Card Weekend, and you'd look at both opponents, so the Packers or the Cowboys. Obviously, the Cowboys were not an opponent that the 49ers would see in the divisional round, but just both of those teams had a ton of history with the 49ers. And when you look back um, specifically at the Packers, lots of recent history. Um, And the 49ers have won the last four playoff meetings uh, over Green Bay. They saw the Packers in the 2012 divisional round, the 2013 wildcard round, the 2019 conference championship, and then that very snowy, epic game of 2021 in Green Bay in the divisional round. Um, And that's really the one that's fresh, I think, in everyone's memory. There was a block punt by Jordan Willis and then a scoop and score by safety Talanoa Hufunga and then a Robbie Gold field goal to just secure the victory. Um, And so that's the one that you immediately think back to, but just a very rich history between these two organizations. I think this is a great way to kick off the NFL playoffs for the 49ers Um, and just happy that we are not going to Green Bay and will not hopefully be facing any snowy conditions barring anything absolutely crazy happening in the Bay. So um, yeah, just very excited for this matchup and yeah, just a lot of great storylines headed into this one. Yeah. Now let's dive into the wild card game. Larry, what were some of your key takeaways from the green Bay Dallas contest? What did you learn about this postseason Packers team? Well, I mean, I, I, it's interesting. I mean, um, Green Bay is 10th in the league as far as points per game allowed on defense. They're 12th in the league in points per game scored on offense. Um, what I noticed is that, you know, definitely LaFleur understood that Dallas is a team that's a front-running team, right? So Dallas was 10-0 and this year when they got the lead, and they were 2-5, and I believe, in the games where their opponents scored first. And so I thought that was a real key factor at the beginning of the game is LaFleur won the coin toss, took the ball, and then they drove down and ha- held the lead the entire game and made Dallas uncomfortable. And I would imagine if LaFleur wins the to- the coin toss against the 49ers, he's going to do much of the same. But I think what really stands out is that Jordan Love, Dallas didn't put any real pressure on Jordan Love. He sat back there and he made play after play after play. Uh, Aaron Jones is a tremendous two-way player. I mean, he can catch the ball out of the backfield and you can hand it to him. 
And then offensively, you know, it's they've got two starting caliber tight ends in Tucker Craft and Luke Musgrave. And a bunch of young receivers that all have confidence. Dontavian Wicks is really hot late in the year. Dobbs had a great game this week. Jaden Reed had a huge game the week prior. So they just have depth of weapons. And the four young 49er defensive backs, I think, are going to be hugely challenged in this next game. Yeah, Lindsay, what were some of your notes after watching this Green Bay-Dallas wildcard game? Yeah, I mean, I think just to highlight Jordan Love a little bit further, uh, the 49ers are absolutely going to have to be on their defensive assignments. He has just continued to heat up as the playoff, as the end of the regular season really went on. Um, the Packers fell to three and six after their loss to the Pittsburgh Steelers. And then in those following eight games, Jordan Love had a passer rating above a hundred. He's just just continued to get better week after week. And you can see him just completing amazing throws. He's got a lot of arm talent. He's great over the middle. He's great when facing pressure. He can scramble and then make plays. Um, so really it's just just going to have to take everyone doing their job, doing what the 49ers do best um, in order to make sure that he doesn't have another really big day like he did against the Cowboys. And with how the schedule plays out, the 49ers are set to play their first playoff game this Saturday, and their number one seeding could play a big factor in this contest, especially when it comes to rest. With the combination of the Niners getting a first round by and the Packers having to A, quickly recover, and B, travel to the West Coast. Lindsay, how much will rest be a factor in this contest, and how could the Niners benefit? You know, I think for the 49ers, the rest was so important just because of the very lengthy injury list that they had by the time the regular season was over. I think one of the most significant returns uh, was seeing that defensive lineman Eric Armstead rejoin practice um, for the first time during the bye week since completing that week 13 win over the Philadelphia Eagles. He's someone that has, had, has added a ton to that interior of the defensive line when he was playing alongside Javon Hargrave. He's really big for the 49ers run defense. That's going to be really important when you've got a guy like Aaron Jones coming to town. Um, and so I think that's probably the biggest uh, gain for the 49ers if uh, Eric Armstead is able to be out there and healthy and really time was the only thing that could have helped that. And then you've got just a ton of other guys coming back from nicks and bruises from just an, an 18 week season. Um, so interested to see which 49ers are back in practice, ready to go. Obviously Christian McCaffrey should be back this week. He's been resting for a while, obviously another very significant person to have healthy. Um, but he did say in that week eight in week 18, that had the week 18 stakes been a lot higher, he felt that he could have played, but Christian McCaffrey on rest, that's always a good thing. And Larry, it looks like this is going to be Brock Purdy's first game against the Packers. How do you see that matchup playing out against Green Bay's defense? Well, it's really interesting because Joe Barry in this last game against uh, Dallas played a lot of zones and and yet mixed it up. I mean, if you look at the – he played a, 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 a number of different zone concepts throughout the game. And at times – um, you know, Prescott and Lamb in the first half really seemed out of sorts. I mean, Lamb wound up with nine catches for 110 yards, but a lot of that was in the second half, and the game was really almost over at halftime. So I think, you know, for, for Brock Purdy, um, you're going to have to just understand that you're going to see some things that you haven't seen. But also, I don't think the 49ers should in any way be, uh, you know, intimidated by this, by this Green Bay defense. I mean, this Green Bay defense, it you know, it they have struggled at different points during this year. Um, they gave up 30 points to Carolina in Week 16, so it's not a a defense that that you know should be able to dominate the 49ers. But um, Brock Purdy's got to take care of the football. I mean, when Brock doesn't turn it over, the 49ers are undefeated this year, and when Brock does turn it over, they're two and four. So him taking care of the football is really one of the key factors. Great. Well, that will do it for this episode. Thank you so much, Lindsay and Larry, for joining me in this update. Don't forget to follow First in 10 on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Turn on the notifications so you're in the know when we post any breaking news updates. And thank you, Faithful, for tuning in. Hey.